Joining me now, as he often does, my friend Chuck DeVore. Chuck, I'm going to tackle the first thing first. By the way, Chuck is with the Texas Public Policy Institute. He's the vice president of national initiatives. Chuck, these Democrats, everybody knows about the Democrats who fled the session. They went back to D.C. They put the whole thing on Instagram and talked about how oppressed they were. Are they back? And if they're back, are they in jail? Well, some of them are back. Uh, the last I heard, and this was just a few moments ago, uh, we have about 96 members available out of the 100 that we need for quorum. So Texas has 150 members of the House. Texas is one of only four states, though, that has a two-thirds requirement instead of a simple majority to get a quorum. Massachusetts actually has less than 50 percent, kind of odd. But uh, no, we're, we're still four shy, and so far as I know, no one's been arrested. And we've had a second judge, in fact, issue an injunction saying that uh, they can't go, the House cannot go and arrest a member, uh, Gene Wu, out of the uh, Houston area, because I guess the judge thinks he's the Speaker of the House now. Okay. Uh, how has Governor Abbott been throughout this process? I'll be honest, as soon as he announced he was going to arrest them when they return, I said, no, he won't. You watch. He's going to chicken out. But has he been good? Have I been wrong? Right. So to be very clear, the governor does not have the authority to arrest the members. This is an authority inherent within a legislative body. So what happens okay. is, the, in this case, the Speaker of the Texas House issued his own uh, warrants for the civil arrest of these 52 absent members. That then empowers the Sergeant of Arms uh, to work with Texas law enforcement and to ask them to secure the members to bring them into the chamber. Now, this doesn't often happen in Texas, but it has happened in other states and it has happened at the federal level. For example, you might be amused to hear that back in 1988, uh, Republicans were using parliamentary procedures to stall a Democratic effort to pass uh, campaign finance reform legislation. And late at night, I believe it was Senator Malcolm Wallop um, asked for a quorum, you know, called to question that there was a quorum, and then left. There weren't a lot of Democrats around, so they broke quorum. And so the leader in the U.S. Senate then uh, told the sergeant at arms to go find uh, members and round them up and bring them to the chamber so they could have a quorum. And they found Senator Bob Packwood in his office, and Senator Packwood, former senator from, from Oregon, and he refused to go with them. And so literally, the sergeant at arms, the Capitol Police in this case, the Capitol Police, uh, literally physically restrained a U.S. senator and dragged him into the Senate chamber by his feet so they could have a quorum. So th this is something that happens from time to time in legislative bodies. Okay. <laughs> All right. What exactly are they holding up? I think we've probably lost the plot on what they're right. holding up, why they did all this. What are they holding up, and is it going to inevitably pass at some point anyway? Right. So there's there's two things of consequence that I'd like to, to mention. There's actually more, but the, the huge reason why they left is the uh, election integrity reforms that the Republicans would like to pass. And by the way, this is fairly routine uh, legislation. Uh, I've testified in favor of uh, legislation to tighten up and to close loopholes and improve safeguards in the Texas election code multiple times going back to 2017. So this is not anything that is anything new, uh, but it reduces the opportunity for a legislative or, pardon me, uh, electoral shenanigans. And so there's a fair number of Democrats that don't like it. They claim that uh, the legislation is racist and they claim that it's, it's going to suppress minority votes, et cetera. Uh, whereas Republicans uh, and the Texas Public Policy Foundation looks at it as, as improving safeguards uh, over a free and fair uh, vote. And so what they did is a bunch of them fled to Washington, D.C. And interestingly enough, Jesse, they advocated for S-1 and H.R. 1, the so-called For the People Act, which would federalize election rules over all 50 states and outlaw, for example, a photo ID to be required to, to vote. It would prevent the proper maintenance of voter lists. It would allow for same-day registration. Uh, it would prevent people from even being able to check whether or not the, the newly registered voter was a citizen in time for them to cast a ballot. And so uh, all the while, while they're trying to resist uh, the improvements to Texas law, and claiming, by the way, that they're not opposed to 
to voter ID because it's very, very popular in Texas. Uh, some 87% of Texans agree that we should have voter ID. Uh, then they go to Washington, D.C., and they say something entirely uh, different, 180 degrees different by trying to uh, you know, encourage passage of this bill in Washington, D.C. that would override all of Texas's election laws, including the current bill being considered today. So that's one thing. Another thing, bail reform. In Texas, if you're a, a violent criminal and you have a, a violent background and you have enough dough to make bail or you get in front of a weak judge, this happens especially in Harris County, which is the, the I think, the third most populous county uh, in the country, uh, home to Houston. Uh, we have had now seven people murdered in Texas since the end of the regular session at the end of May, five of whom were murdered out of Harris County. And these are individuals who were murdered because the people that killed them got out uh, on bail when they were dangerous criminals. And there's a bail reform bill that was pending in the end of May that when the Democrats broke quorum over the, the uh, election uh, law, they couldn't pass this one either. And so that's on the call as well. So every month that goes by, if you, if you count the numbers, uh, we're looking at approximately three or four people killed every month because of the Democrats delay and we need a constitutional amendment to pass it. It would have been on the ballot in November to fix it but now we've missed the deadline because the Democrats left town and won't do their job so now it can't be passed by the voters until May of 2022. So in that six month delay my estimate is that at least 21 Texans are going to be murdered, killed by criminals because the Democrats left town and refused to do their jobs. It, it, is, it is crazy to me, Chuck, how just one party is in such control of so many things, they just don't play by any rules anymore and don't feel compelled to do so. It blows me away. Hey, thanks so much for watching The First on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me, like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.